right off the Brady Bunch, I did The Towering Inferno. And that was a huge epic. You know, the script's 250 pages or something. And uh, um, that uh, it took four months. And then 20th Century Fox wanted to cast me in Swiss Family Robinson, which was a new series. I was up for that, too. And Helen really? Hunt got the, the part, yeah. Um, no kidding. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, and Willie Ames got and, your part. And Right. My, my parents, I didn't want to do it. I, my parents made me get on the phone. I, I didn't want to do it. I wanted uh, my high, my eighth grade, whatever class, was going on a ski trip. It was the middle of winter. And I, my parents, they, they wouldn't turn it down for me. They made me get on the phone and say to the producer, um, I haven't had a vacation in six years. And, uh, and I'm, I just don't want to do your show. It's a very, you don't turn down work in Hollywood if you ever want to get work in Hollywood. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> nobody ever called me again after that. <laughs> right, it, it is a jinx. It yeah, except, work, yeah, except Sid and Marty Croft. They offered me the price. I said, figuring they'd say, no way. I said, well, I'll do it for twice that much. Mm. And they called back in five minutes and said, okay, you're hired. Ooh. So there we You could have tripled it. Yeah. Yeah. Three hundred dollars a show. Yeah. Man, that would have been something. Much like Michael, I was just really enjoying having a normal life. Um, sort of, yeah. Um, hoping to distance myself from Brady Bunch and figuring that I really wasn't going to work again until I was eighteen. I really planned that if I went back into acting, it would be after the age of eighteen, which um, is when you can work a lot more. Unless, unless they're casting a show with a lot of other children, they're not going to hire a teenager to play a teenager. They'll, they'll hire an 18-year-old to play like 15 because they, they can get around the child uh, labor laws. So I really wasn't counting on working. And, um, and in the meantime, I'd also developed this, this pretty strong love of music. And I was having ideas of, of uh, going into rock and roll. So being involved in a TV show where we performed disco music probably couldn't have been any more loathsome to me, and yet I wanted to do it because I wanted to be with my That's family. That's entertainment. When they told me the premise, I just, I mean, even in Hollywood, I had a hard time grasping that what they were actually saying to me. Now, you're going to what? You're going to say that the Bradys have, have done what? They're, they have their own singing, dancing, variety show as a family, and... They live at the beach, <laughs> the beach house. And, uh, of course, I knew of Sid and Marty Croft, because they'd been filming uh, H.R. Poppin stuff and what, what, oh, Lidsville, right across the, the street from us at, yeah. uh, at Paramount. We were on Let's stage five, and they were, they were on stage 13 or 7 or whatever. It was right across the road. And, uh, boy, I tell you, there's, there's hardly anything so traumatic as seeing the, the guy in the H.R. Puffin stuff suit with the, with the mouth flipped back, you know, in his, in his uh, underwear sweating. shirt. Sweating. In Just his underwear shirt. Oh, completely soaking wet. <laughs> and uh, um, I remember him coming into the, uh, the commissary once or twice when I had, you know, my burger in my mouth. Just going, oh, there he is, you know. With, because dragging his dragging the top of his head behind him because it flipped <laughs> off like a you know like a cap, unbelievable. It's a so we knew of Sid and Marty Croft, and I knew that I probably didn't want to you know be that close to this project. And the next thing you know, we're all there, all everybody except Eve. Eve had done Don Portrait of a Teenage Runaway, so she was kind of a hot property. And I remember saying something that um, I think this is my first and probably my only really really dirty look from Florence Henderson was, uh, I don't know, some, some remarks were, were always often made about Eve, well, since Eve didn't want to do this and stuff. And, and I, I, I said, don't we all wish we had something better to do than this show? Oh. <laughs> big mistake, rough. big mistake, yeah. I, I thought Florence was going to box my ears. Um, but I mean, at the time, she was doing the sequel to Dawn, Portrait of a Teenage Run, Runaway, and you know, looked like things were looking really good for her. And I knew I was there because I, you know, it was, it, it was, it was found work. It was an extra job in between, you know, Brady Bunch and growing up. I saw her, her absence and Jerry Rochelle's presence as being, as being pretty much business. I was pretty, pretty 
you know, free and easy going about the whole thing. Hey, who's playing Jan? Okay, you? Great. You know, and let's be friends. And she was fine. She was a lot of fun, you know. And, um, I didn't get too worked up about, about any of that. Um, no, because I mean, maybe I should Eve care might more. be sacred to us. Jan Brady wasn't necessarily. Right. And, and Jan exactly. Brady is a role that anybody can play. Um, it didn't replace Jerry Rochelle. We loved her. She was great. She didn't replace Eve, Eve in Plum, our heads but, at all. But she can play Jan. Yeah. You know? It's a business decision that people make all the time, you know. Um, do it or not do it. In the, in the, uh, when we had contract disputes with the animation show, mm -hmm. um, we, the, the three younger kids kept doing the voices. We'd come, they'd come in, sit in front of a microphone, and you'd read the script, and then they'd make the episode, you know, just like they still do with cartoons. And uh, um, we knew they were having contract disputes with the older three kids. And one day, I was watching the animated show, and Greg just <laughs> didn't quite sound like Barry Williams anymore. In fact, he didn't sound anything even remotely like Barry Williams anymore. And, and Marsha was played and, by Baby Huey. And neither so did Marsha. Like... And neither did Marsha or Peter. And that was that, you know. Yeah. So, so I kind of just took it as being business, you know. You don't want to, you don't want to play. See ya. The big surprise though was, what's Bob doing yeah, here? Why is Bob, is Bob doing Ray this? Do this? How is that possible? <laughs> and you know what? He loved it. He loved doing yeah, the dance he numbers. Yeah, he had fun. And, and uh, he had a lot of generally fun. good time. It lasted for as long as it lasted. And, Ten episodes. I By think. then, I was driving. You know, I had my own car, and uh, and I'd come up to the rehearsals. It was sort of the way. It. I. I tried to get work. You know, he said you. You figured you weren't going to work yeah. until much later. I. I kept trying to get work um, through my awkward years. You know, well, I. I went out I, on a few auditions. I mean, and, I was up for Swiss Family. And was so too. was so generally rejected that. It's one of the reasons I was doing really well in high school in like physics and chemistry and stuff. It's one of the reasons I, I left LA and went off to college to do other things. Yeah. You know, and uh, um, it was that tough after after all the Brady stuff. It, but it was. I've it, never resented like being about. typecast because it's it's not at, like uh, it's another thing. It's not as bad for the guys is the typecasting. You no, know, see, unless they're like Gilligan or Spock me. or something. You know, then forget it. But, uh, yeah, yeah, you're but if right. You're, if you're uh, an average looking guy, then. See, I figured I wasn't going to work till I was 18. And then when I was 18, I decided to, hey, to go be serious about it. And so I went to an actual, I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and took a year off. And I had an agent that said, oh, that's OK. You know, I wasn't allowed to audition while I was there. And, and then after a year of being there, the, the head of the school said, you know, Susan, the policy here is that you can't audition. And you have an agent. You have a way in. You know, you're, you're, you're free. Well, you're welcome. You've been invited back. To second year at the at the academy, but you probably should should cash in on you know really Cindy. working. So I said okay, <laughs> and and I couldn't even get auditions. Really? And I thought if if I, I went in on auditions, you know, and they told me that I was lousy, that that's okay, I can handle that. But they didn't want I to couldn't see you. go in, right? Well, I just didn't get any work, and and. Uh, Went to work for Sid and Marty Croft, and then we're out of here. <laughs> well, then I, I started doing art. Right. And, and then, then all the struggling I was doing, trying to get you know a job in acting, um, you know, doing jobs as an artist was was working really really well. So, um, but you know, I entertainment always calls for many, again. Many many years, I remember pe telling people that you're a graphic artist in L.A. Yeah. Man. We kept getting cut out of different numbers because I we know. were still underage, and, and yeah, it's school. very difficult. In high school. Yeah, and so we were doing school on the set, and and also the difference to me was that we would shoot for a couple of weeks and then I'd go back to school. We, we were back and forth and back and forth, so I kept seeing my regular friends, but they couldn't handle dealing with the schedule of minors, where we had to have three hours of school. We could only work so many hours per day. And so they couldn't really schedule the um, the rehearsals that well around it. They they just had didn't have experience with kids. So we, as a result, would get cut out of a lot of numbers. I I don't have a very good recollection of of, uh, of what doing the variety show was even like. You know, I have snippets in my memory. It didn't last that long. You know, we were only at it for a couple months, and. Uh, 
um, and I didn't enjoy it. I kind of wanted to forget about it. You know, it was you still. You blacked it out. I was still. I was still. You know, still working in Hollywood. Still, still plugging away at it. But I was still. It was still Brady, and it was not the kind of Brady thing that that I wanted to be involved with. And uh, you look at it now, and you know, it looks like we're having a good time because we probably were. But I swear, I don't yeah, remember were. actually doing that show very much, um, which is weird to say because. I guess it's just a part of my life where, you know, I went to college after that and did all of everything else and just forgot about it. But you do know? you remember? Whereas I remember the Brady Bunch because yeah. it was so much part of my childhood and, you know, such a such a bigger thing. And my family was involved. My mother was there every day, you know. And, uh, and, uh, and like you said, the scheduling, they were forced to schedule well for the Brady Bunch. Yeah. Right? Because they had six minors. Barry Williams at the end was was emancipated or whatever, and but but they had at least five minors, and uh, we went through second ads like water because it was so, it was so rough for them. We tried to make it easy, you know, as we could by being professional and being where we were supposed to be when we were supposed to be, but but uh, then they scheduled around us and weren't as competent on the variety hour with me and Susan. Because, because we were still minors and everybody else was adults and they could work as long as they wanted. Yeah, we even got in trouble because we had worked too, too many, many hours. hours. We used to say goodbye to the welfare worker and we'd, we'd drive off the lot and then we'd sneak back and come in. One day she was waiting for us. Yeah. So we almost got our, um, our work permits revoked because of that. But do you remember Chevy Chase? He was filming next to us. I remember Donnie and Marie being there. Yeah, Chevy Chase was filming <laughs> a special. No. They have a talk show too. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chevy Chase was filming a special there, and um, Paul Schaefer was with them. We used to oh, ditch really? school. You and me and Jerry would ditch school. Paul would Paul would grab us, they you know, get in the office. I'm and Paul would play the piano. Jerry would sing. Uh -huh. You and I would I don't know, pick Chase? Noises, noises. Uh, Chevy Chase would pretend to play the TV set or do something funny. And and we'd see the teacher <laughs> through the window. She's off looking for us. I thought, wow, at last we've learned how to ditch school on a set. This is yeah. really cool. So Chevy Chase and Paul Schaefer uh, contributed to the corruption of us minors. I think mostly what I wanted to do was get back to Torrance Beach, you know, and, <laughs> and hang out with my friends. That, that's that's why I don't remember it. So I was thinking of the beach the whole time I was, you know, singing. Well, I was still because cavorting. Saturday Night Live had had just started, and you know, it was this brand new, wonderful, innovative show, and I I lived for Saturday nights so that I could watch the show. And and one day Jerry and I are on the the, the lot doing the Variety Hour, and we turn the corner, and there's Chevy Chase, and and <gasps> I was like. Uh. And he thought it was so amusing that there were Brady's on the lot. And so, you know, whenever he'd run into us, he'd say, hey, you know, come, come back to the office. And, and Jerry Rochelle could sing like, like a bird, and Paul would play the piano. And um, the, <laughs> the secretaries would jitter. It was just, it was just kind of weird. This whole little musical thing would happen, and, you know, we got to ditch class. I'm such a loser for not remembering that, any yeah, of that. I don't remember dude, that. Don't you remember? Chevy had this fake hand that he'd go around with. He'd go to shake your hand. He, oh, he was, my God. Was that was Chevy Chase? Yes, you go to shake his hand. It was this jelly hand, and I took wow. the jelly hand and I put it in the sure? blender. And at the last minute, they caught it. The, 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 you know, I wanted that to be in the background of one of the scenes. You know, uh -huh. there's the kitchen. I put the jelly hand in the blender and dog on it. The, the, the very last minute, they're well, oh, no, 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 we have to do it over again. There, there's a hand in the blender. <laughs> Evil. When I when I came to set on the first feature, for half a day. Um, I could, I, you know, from across the street, I was just walking to set, and I could see, oh, that must be the kid playing Bobby. Great, cool, you know? So, uh, so we hung out together, had lunch, and, uh, and halfway through the day, this feeling of total creepiness started coming over me because this kid, Jesse Lee is his name, he, he had clearly studied Bobby Brady very carefully mm -hmm. and was, was, was me. It's weird. But but he wasn't me. He was, was replacing. Bobby. He was replacing, you know, playing a part. See, that's but a, it was it was very strange. That's nice what was kid. weird about Barry's movie, the Growing Up Brady, was okay. It wasn't just 
with, with the feature films, okay, here's somebody else playing Cindy as a child. Yeah, I met the, the actress and she talked about studying me and this and that. And we had a lot of really weird similarities. But then they were I'm growing she was up Brady. Susan Olson. No, no, in she up Brady. right in growing up Brady, the right. girl's playing Susan Olson. Not and I and I complimented her. I called her up the next day. I said, i I was very aware that you were playing Susan Olson and not Cindy Brady. Thank you. And then she lived. That means something. No, it, it should. I wanted her to know that she had done a really good job of it. When I would go into character for Cindy, it was more, you know, animated and and dee 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 IQ down by by thirty percent, points. forty points. <laughs> um, oh, that's me. No, Cindy had at least an IQ of seventy. Um, and also, mm, nice. in playing Cindy, it, Susan, you know, this, this, it was funny. It was a little tidbit. That, you know, every time the director yelled cut or anything, there's there's little Susan going over, can't keep her hands off Tiger, the dog, you know, I'm a big time animal lover. The first Tiger's name was Chip. The second That's Tiger was trivia. hit by a truck. His name was Rupert. The third Tiger was named Tiger, and he was fired from the Brady Bunch, and he went on to win a doggy Oscar for a movie that he did with um, Don Johnson called The Boy and His Dog. He also appeared on The Cher Show. When Cher left Sunny, she had her own variety show, Tiger was in that. He did better than anybody after the show ended. I'm not sure they knew what, where they were going with it. Was it a tribute, a spoof? And it turned out to be, of course, a total far, uh, you know, total parody farce. Which but, uh, I took as a tribute. I, that was the biggest compliment I'd ever seen. That was, that was something that made me, I, I, I watched a screening of it in New York, and I sat there and went, wow, I'm really proud to be me. We it were both in it. brought a tear to the eye. Well, it we, was especially good because we, they cut us out. And we I were both in myself. it, but we're not in it. They yeah. cut us out. Uh, you you I, didn't I'm, know I'm, that, huh? I involved. played an LAPD officer, and you were the mailman, right? Yes, I was. Mailman woman. Yes, going postal. I, <laughs> I shot all the Brady family. And they, they decided that they, yeah, they cut all that out. <laughs> my, my friends always seem to... Um, just assume that I wanted to distance myself from Cindy and would always seem overwhelmed at how different I was and, and kind of try to emphasize to me that they were friends with me. And, and so they, they really downplayed the Brady Bunch to the point where I always thought that my friends thought the Brady Bunch was horribly uncool. And then <laughs> years later, I'd find out, no, we really liked the show. We just, you know, we, just we didn't, didn't want to talk about it didn't want to bug you. Yeah. Um, I think that um, in my 20s, uh, it, it wasn't cool to talk about the Brady Bunch. My friends and I pretty much ignored it. We had a laugh occasionally when, when someone that we didn't know would get very excited. Um, I, heard, I heard one time um, that a rumor, I was at a Grateful Dead show, and I heard a rumor going around the show that Bobby Brady was on tour with the Grateful Dead. And some, somebody actually came up to me face to face and said, and said, uh, you know, I hear Bobby Brady's on tour. And I looked at him, I said, no kidding. I turned around and walked away. And, uh, <laughs> and so, so my friends and I didn't, didn't really make anything of it together. You know, we, it wasn't any sort of a topic, except for they all wanted to do Marsha, you know, but, but that's, you, you already knew that. Um, um, however, now, that the Brady, the whole Brady thing has reached this I, icon, American, you know, legend thing that it has. Um, now, hardly a day goes by when I'm on a set, or I'm I'm at a, a party or dinner or something, and uh, somehow that somebody doesn't bring up Brady Bunch, you know, what it meant to them, what what they feel about it, and I'm perfectly happy to talk to them about it because it's funny, you know the. To hear what people say, there's all sorts of all sorts of uh, reasons now to talk about it and that it comes into your life in some way. But it, that didn't happen much in the in the years, um, not immediately following the show, but say say in my 20s, which would have been in the 80s. Yeah, it, it was certainly for me in the, in the immediate years following the show was considered extremely uncool to have been a part of the Brady Bunch. Among your friends? Um, in the industry, more oh, so. Oh, oh. Um, among the friends, too, yeah, yeah. My, my, my people didn't like the show. 
Um, well, neither do the critics, you know. But look at it. Look at where it is. Yeah, now. but I mean, there's also that window of people that didn't like it in the first running, or, or you know, thought they were too cool for it. And now it's it's almost difficult to find anybody who wasn't touched by the show and, and who would say, "Oh, like the Brady Bunch," you know. Uh, right. Which, right. Right. There was which now of would be the, the uncool thing to say would be to say that you didn't watch the Brady Bunch or that you didn't like the Brady Bunch. You know, now I'm surprised at how many really, you know, cool people, people that I admire, are just like, oh, that show meant so much to me. And that's, that's really neat. <laughs> and it also helps in booking guests, because I have a radio show. So. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's you. you know, <laughs> Sydney Brady's one of the hosts. Oh, oh okay, well. <laughs> Is Marsha going to be there? Yeah, really.